Today we're going to be looking at the repairability of the PS5 Slim. Let's get this thing taken apart and I wanted to show you how to remove these plates. First make sure your PS5 is oriented just like this. We're going to pull up on this edge until we hear a snap. And then we're going to pull up this way and that will just come off just like that. Now for this plate we're going to pull up along this edge just like that and then push it up this way and that'll get that one off. These have little hooks right here. So those need to hook into these little tabs right here. And so if you try and pull up here, it's not gonna pull up. It's only gonna pull up over here. Now the other side. Now if you need to replace your disk drive, you're gonna need to remove this plate. Just pull up right over here and right over here. There we go. And then pull up this way, just like that. And then over here, we're gonna pull up right here and right here and pull up that way. This also shows you where the M.2 drive is. Now to remove the disk drive, we simply just pull up in the back, just like that, and then pull up in the front, just like that. It's got one little hook right here and one little hook right here. These hook in right down here, like that. And then it just pushes down in the back. So there's actually even little arrows. We've got an arrow there and an arrow there. Just gonna be using a Phillips number one to remove the M.2 drive cover. And this is exactly the same as the previous version. So no changes there. You just put in your drive and then you make sure and secure it with this screw and you're good to go. Now to remove the fan, we're just gonna remove this little cover right here. That went flying. One of the things that I love that they've started doing is they made the fan side connector white and the motherboard side connector black. So if you need to remove this, you pull on the white part not the black part. If you put your pliers too far down in there and start pulling up, you're gonna be pulling on the black part. And I'm gonna grab firmly, but not too hard or else it's gonna squish the connector. I'm gonna rock back and forth as I pull up. And there we go. Now each of these fan screws is different. So I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna lay it next to the hole. And you can take a screenshot if you need to, if you need to take this apart yourself. It's important to note there's not only different sizes of screws, they're different threads. This thread is a fine pitch. It screws down into metal, same with this one. This is a coarse pitch that screws down into plastic and same with this one. What I try to do sometimes is just actually leave them in the little fan cage as I pull it out and just leave them on there when I get the fan out. Luckily, they do have it marked so we do know that this is indeed a fan. And there are the numbers on the fan, 12 volts, 1.69 amps, and this is a different fan than any of the other PS5s. So if you're trying to replace it, it does have to be from the PS5 Slim. So I'm not sure what this means, but some of these holes, like this screw hole has one dot next to it. This one over here under the, the warranty sticker has two dots next to it. This one over here has two dots. This one over here has two dots. This one up here has two dots. And all the rest of them, oh, we've got one dot over here, two dots over here. This isn't even a screw hole. This is just a hole in the plastic. Tell me what you think that means in the comments. And next, we need to remove this sticker. There we go. Then we need to remove the case screws. Now with all of those removed, I will let you take a screenshot if you need to know which screws go where. There we go. Now we can remove this top plastic piece. In the original PS5, there was 43 screws holding this plate on. Luckily, they significantly reduced the amount of totally necessary screws to only 34. Now, all of those screws, except for this screw, are all exactly the same, so you don't need to worry about where they go, except for this one right here is a very long screw. Also keep in mind when you're reassembling this that these holes with the four marks around them, that means that no screws go on there at this point. So none there, none there, none there, none there, none there, and then all of these do have screws in them. If you're trying to do this yourself, just be super careful. This is not held down by anything over here. So if you accidentally bump it or something, it can easily bend this heat pipe. So just be super careful around this. It's pretty fragile. It is interesting that it's got a bend in these wires right here. I don't know why they would have done that. It makes me feel like they just had some wires laying around that were too long, so they threw a bend in it. Who knows though. Now for this ribbon cable right here, I saw one other teardown online already that said you need to like push this metal piece out or something. I don't think that's the case. I've never done that before. All I do is push it down and then this cable just pulls right out. I don't think that metal piece is supposed to come out of that connector any more than it is. You guys tell me in the comment section if I'm wrong. <laughs> like I need to say that, you guys will do that anyway. There we go. And here we go. Just got a bunch of thermal paste down here. 
This is a little hokey. So this whole piece is just held on by these adhesive strips right here. That's interesting. Nothing too crazy here. I do want to take a look at this HDMI port and see if it's any better than the original, but we've got to get these clamp screws off first, then we'll have a look at that. Two more screws holding the board down. All right, and here we go. Do we have any oxidation on the APU yet? Mm, no, it actually looks pretty good so far. Dry spots on the APU seem to be a major problem with the other versions of PS5, so I don't see any changes with any of this that's gonna make that any different on this one, but who knows. The PS5 Slim motherboard has a EDM040 for the motherboard number. The 1215 was the EDM030. And here is the PS5 HDMI port from the other models, and it's literally exactly the same. So that's a little disappointing because these HDMI ports really aren't the best. Repair shops see a ton of these come in for HDMI ports, and they're just kind of weak on these PS5s, and honestly, they were weak on the PS4s as well. That's one thing that Xbox does way better, generally speaking, is their HDMI ports. That being said, if you're careful when you plug your cord in and out, it's gonna be just fine. So this is the PS5 Slim heatsink and cooling radiators, and this is the one from the 1215. The 1215 had some radiators basically right on the chip. The Slim does not have that. It also seems like the Slim's radiators are probably a little bit smaller overall than these three on the 1215 model. Let's have a look at the power supply. So the power supply is interesting. This is the 1215 and this one is very similar between all of the previous models of PS5. This one is obviously completely different and I think they probably had to redesign it so it would fit into a smaller space. This one is just such a chonkster. For the 1215 model, we've got an ADP400FR, output 12 volts, 31 amps. And on the Slim, we've got an ADP400GR, 12 volts, 31 amps. So essentially exactly the same ratings. Let's take a look at the inside. It is nice that this power supply just pops right out. It would be really nice though, if it popped out from the other side, because if it did that, then all you'd have to do is remove that cover and then it would just pop right out. But obviously that would just be too repairable. And here is the awkward power supply. I do have to stress, don't mess with power supplies. It's not worth getting shocked. They're hard to get into and it's just a dangerous thing to do. So just don't do it. This one has never been turned on and I've double checked to make sure the capacitors are discharged but also I'm still not touching them. Over here is sort of the control chip, and this is one of the things that commonly go bad on these. This one is another, some sort of control chip as well. And then we also have another one over here. I don't know a ton about these power supplies, but I have on the PS4, I have replaced some of those parts. These are the huge capacitors, and then we actually have quite a few other smaller ones, but still big. And next, let's have a look inside this disk drive. Kind of assuming we need to remove this black piece. Kind of like a frame. So those three screws on the top and those four silver screws on the bottom. And will that get us in? All right, that gets that part off. This is the disk drive for the 1215 model. It's roughly about the same size. So I'm expecting the inside to be not too different. Let's remove one, two, three black screws. Now I do wanna note that there is a serial number on this disk drive, but I wanna see the inside and see what the laser and stuff like that looks like. Let's remove this bottom plate. Check out the roller assembly and the laser. I love that this little board is easily replaceable. It's the one with these switches and sometimes these switches can break. So it's really nice that this is pretty easily replaceable. Okay, and here we go. And this is similar to the other models of PlayStation 5, but definitely different. We still have the same rollers and a similar loading mechanism. With these four screws removed, we can actually pull this whole thing out. We can just pull out this laser assembly right here with that little ribbon cable removed, and we can flip it up. And there we go. That is the inside. And this is a KEM497AAA. Overall, as far as repairability, the PS5 Slim is about the same as the other PS5s. It's got the exact same HDMI port that can give some problems. It's got liquid metal that can result in dry spots and possibly overheating. The cooling system is 
undetermined whether it'll be a problem or not. And the rest of the console is basically just the same. The glossy plates are definitely a lose for me, but they look cool right out of the box. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.